Uh, in this video, I'm going to introduce you the Cauchy distribution. It will have, as you see, a number of remarkable properties. I have a story to tell you with Cauchy, and that's the following. Take a one-dimensional table, which is parametrized by the real numbers. Here is the origin of that table. And above point B of the one-dimensional table, at height A, where A is a positive real and B is any real, place a torch, a torchlight, and point it, this is a torch, and point it at a uniform random angle alpha from vertical. So let alpha be a uniform random variable between left horizontal, which is minus pi half, and right horizontal, which is positive pi half. And then the torch is, pl is placed in that direction from vertical. So again, when alpha is negative, then it goes left. When alpha is positive, it goes right. And then denote by x the point where the light beam touches the one-dimensional table. Then x is going to have the Cauchy distribution. The parameters by convention are B first and A second. Okay. Now let's find out the distribution function or the density function, well, both actually for this Cauchy. So first of all, let's notice by uh, geometry or trigonometry, if you wish, that X is going to be just the, uh, well, the tangent of alpha. Let's start with the tangent of alpha. That's going to be X minus B over a okay so um, x is going to be just uh, a times tangent of alpha plus b where alpha is the uniform random variable notice that when alpha is between minus pi half and pi half then tangent behaves very nicely it's a strictly increasing uh, nice function the limit is minus infinity and plus infinity. So x is actually covering all of the real line as alpha goes from minus pi half to pi half. Okay. All right. And so after all these preliminaries, now let's find the distribution function of x at little x. So let's find the probability that x is smaller than or equal to little x. Okay. And in fact, instead of x, I want to see tangent of, or I want to see alpha or tangent of alpha. So I want to start with transforming this into x minus b over a on the left hand side. So what, what, what did I do? I subtracted b, I divided by a. a is a positive number. So when I divide by that, the inequality stays as it was. But I need to do the same with little x. So I have this. Okay, x minus b over a is, the, is my tangent of alpha. So what's the probability that the tangent of the uniform is less than x minus b over a? And all I need to do is apply an inverse tangent, which is perfectly fine because in this interval of alpha from negative pi half to pi half, tangent is an, is an increasing nice function and it covers all of the real line. So it's absolutely fine to take inverse tangent. It doesn't even change the inequality. And I get this. And from here is quite easy because alpha is uniform on that interval. And we know the distribution function of uniform. Inverse tangent is actually in the, or in, in the interval minus pi half pi half. So the distribution function of uniform there is quite easy. One just takes this number inverse tangent, subtract the left end of the interval, divide by the total length of the interval, which is just the difference between its left and right ends. Okay, and uh, one can just say it's uh, inverse tangent uh, plus pi over two divided by pi. That's the distribution function for all x uh, in the real line. Okay, and it's a, it's a very nice distribution function. It goes from minus infinity, uh, the limit of zero at minus infinity to the limit of one at plus infinity. It's, 
is perfectly fine. Now if I want to find the uh, corresponding density then I need to differentiate this and to differentiate this I first want to show you how to find the derivative of inverse tangent if you ever forget what it is of course you can look it up but if you ever forget what it is then here's a nice way to do it so suppose I want to find the uh, derivative of tangent inverse u the only thing you need to remember is that the derivative of the inverse function is the reciprocal of the derivative except one needs to take it at the inverse place so differentiate tangent and take it at tangent inverse of course this is for nice functions so uh, there are a couple of conditions for that but tangent satisfies all, all these conditions okay so what is the derivative of tangent so tangent of uh, say w is sine over cosine and if I want to differentiate the thing then I need to differentiate this fraction so I have the square of cosine downstairs and I have the derivative of sine which is cosine multiplied with the denominator so that's a cosine square minus sine times the derivative of the denominator which is sine with the minus sign again so it makes a positive sine square one could simplify this down to one oops now you can see this one could simplify this down to one upstairs but uh, I'm not gonna do that I'm just going to say it's one plus sine square over cosine square or one plus square of tangent which is going to be nicer in here because if I substitute now 1 over 1 plus square of tangent at tangent inverse then at least on the branch I'm looking at when, uh, when uh, I'm taking tangent of angles between minus pi and pi half then this just simplifies to 1 plus the square of u Okay, so the derivative of uh, tangent inverse is reciprocal of 1 plus square. And now if I can, uh, if I go back to the density of the Cauchy distribution, then I need to differentiate Cauchy, the, the Cauchy distribution function, and that gives me a 1 over pi. So now I need to differentiate tangent inverse at this point. So that's 1 over 1 plus the square of x minus b over a times the derivative of the inner function, which is 1 over a. Okay, and if I now um, say multiply up with a square in this fraction, then I have an a square on top. I use one of the two a's in the a square to cancel out with the one over a. And I have an a square plus x minus b square. That's the density of Cauchy. Okay. Now, a uh, couple of remarks are in order. The first remark is that we have something called a standard Cauchy standard Cauchy that's the Cauchy distribution of the horizontal parameter B the horizontal parameter B equals to 0 and the vertical parameter A the height of the torch if you want equals 1 okay so that is going to be Cauchy of horizontal parameter 0 and vertical parameter 1 uh, there is kind of an analogy with normal distribution, the parameterization of normal distribution, but the analogy uh, soon finishes actually, because if you look at standard Cauchy, standard Cauchy's density, which is pretty much the same as the general density for what I'm going to say, but it's just easier to, to talk about that. So A is 1, B is 0, so I guess 1 over 1 plus X square. If you look at this carefully, then expectation according to this density the integral of minus infinity to infinity 
1 over pi x over 1 plus x square does not exist. There is no mean for Cauchy. And that's because this thing decays like 1 over x for large x's. For large x's this 1 plus doesn't matter. And it's x over x square or 1 over x for large x's. Integral of 1 over x for large x's is positive infinity. For negative x's it's a negative infinity. And I don't know how to add positive infinity to negative infinity. So Cauchy does not have an expectation. Okay? Cauchy distribution doesn't have an expectation. It's a perfectly fine distribution, but there is no mean. And the second moment is infinite, and the third moment again doesn't exist, and the fourth moment is infinite, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's one of the reasons that uh, Cauchy is actually interesting. There is no mean for Cauchy and infinite variance. Now, I want to show you how the Cauchy distribution transforms under affine transformation. So I want to show you what happens if you have a Cauchy and we add, we add uh, an affine transformation to it. So let x be Cauchy of parameters b and a, fix uh, c and d real numbers, and let's find out the distribution function of let's find out the distribution function of uh, c x plus d. What is the distribution function of c x plus d at some point? In other words, what is the probability that c x plus d is less than or equal to x. Okay, now one thing I uh, want to now simplify is that I'm going to assume from here on that c is positive. So if c is positive, uh, everybody can think about what happens for c equals to zero, of course, is trivial, but for negative c's, everybody can think what's going to happen, something very similar happens. Let's keep c positive now, and then I can divide with it and not change the inequality around. So that's the probability that x is smaller than or equal to little x minus d over c. Okay, so I know what this thing is. This thing is, according to the previous page, is the uh, distribution function of my original Cauchy at this point x minus d over c, which I have in this form here from the previous page. And so I'm going to plug in the inverse tangent of, well, all of this thing, x minus d over c, all of this thing, minus b over a plus pi half over pi. Okay. And let's see if I can uh, make this into a little bit nicer form. So this is the inverse tangent of, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by C. So I have X minus D minus C times B over C A plus pi half over pi. Okay, so I multiplied inside inside the inverse tangent, both numerator and denominator by C. That's what I get. And that's actually in the form of a Cauchy distribution. Namely, if I have CB plus D subtracted, and I have CA divided by, or dividing by, then that's actually the distribution, well, this is equal, the distribution function of a Cauchy distribution. And I just go back to here and read off the new B and new A. The new B is what I subtract from X. The new A is what I divide with. So the new B is CB plus D. And the new A is CA. From which I conclude that cx 
plus d is still Cauchy, but the new parameters are c, b plus d and c, a. Okay? So the Cauchy distribution behaves nicely on f fine transforms. If I multiply by c and uh, add d, then it still stays Cauchy. The first parameter gets multiplied by c and gets a d added, and the second parameter gets multiplied by c. Now, actually, from the story I started with, it's actually quite easy to see what's going on and why. If I multiply by c first, that will bring b over to cb, and it will make a over to ca. That's the result of multiplying by c first. So that's the result of make, well, making this c here, oops, making this c here, okay? And then second, I want to shift, I want to shift the configuration by d. So I'm going to add to the result, I'm going to add d to the result, which will further push this whole thing to the right, if d is positive at least, to Oh, I can see that now I need to align my two sheets. So this will further bring the thing here. So the height is still c times a, but now I added an extra d distance there. Other than that, I still have a torch at a uniform angle between minus pi half to pi half. All of the picture stayed the same, except I shifted the position on the table from B to C, B plus D, and I shifted the height of my torch from A to C, A. And that's exactly what is reflected here in this transformation of the Cauchy distribution. So the transformation of Cauchy is Cauchy again. You can see this from this picture, or you can just do the calculation there and just uh, find analytically that this is the case.